neighbor that they may actually be the truth. Amen. See, I need you. of your neighbor and declare this word. seats for a moment. We are going to stand up and pray in another moment. I want to invite Peter to come up. Peter, if you don't mind coming up. Can you appreciate the worship team and they are leading us today? Thank you so much. We've been in this process of uh, talking about what it is that we are doing in terms of uh, developing this compound and even making it more comfortable for us. And Peter has done such a good job uh, in being a volunteer project manager. I, I need to say this. Um, when we got, 
when you got this space, um, was it October? I think it was about October, um, November 20, 2020, 2020, yes. We came in and we found that the place was as equivalent in terms of cotton as where Peter lives. <laughs> he has two compounds, and I remember visiting his place and looking at the way it looked, and I thought the best person to get to lead us in a place that was full of cotton was you, and you have done an excellent uh, job in mobilizing us, in making sure that we are, we, we are getting the contracts correct, in pushing the work that is being done, in talking about terms that I don't, still don't understand, but I realize you're a banker, so you guys end up using a lot of abbreviations uh, in what you do. But I wanted you to give us an update of where it is that we are, so go ahead. Are, are you on or off? There you are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it's so much fun. Why is it so uh, difficult to get to work? Mm. And I think that's an advantage. So it's a good thing. Uh, but God has reminded me regarding some work that I have that I fall into. Uh, I think when we are constructing work, there's a part where you tend to ask people what to start with. For those who have done construction in it, you are late. As I was seated there, I just remembered that when was the last time I saw my wife in the room? And the answer is no. I don't know. Because it's a long time. Always the same. Always the same. 
é grande que faz, é grande que faz, é grande que quer, mas não adianta ficar amarrado a Deus. Quando se trata de sonhos de Deus, de Deus, Diante de cada um tem um primeiro filho. Se não se ativa, fica o problema. Look at where our children are here. We want to see our children born. Somebody actually made a music for my kids. The kids in the music are here. Yeah. Yeah. This guy is good. Yeah. Okay. You want us to come belong to them to come to this church? So why are you guys even trying to put in your heart to follow the Lord? That's why you stand on your own path. Maybe look at the path. So when this guy sings the music, hey, my kids are too smart. You park around the hundred cars here and there. Yeah. Which part of the Tukuk Kenya? How much is that? A million. Just like that. So when I thought, look at this. I have grown to that point of wow. Yeah. Work for me. Yeah. My brother to buy the take place to almost cost me twenty thousand. What did I brought my kids? For some of you who have been doing online jobs, you no longer need to spend money. What did I brought my kids? For some of you, you know, who are uh, very good in providing services, what did I brought here that made some of you suddenly a little money per person is there? Remember, some of us, I mean, I'll be honest, some of us, I was eagerly preparing to give my kids maybe to go visit Christ, to go for the sake of God's work. But I was amazed. We did a project. We paid a quarter house good for two. I mean, we paid in a quarter of what we should have done. What did I brought one of our kids here? So she was very happy with the money. She said, so there are many ways we can bring this money home. So that when our kids come for uh, holiday, by the way, the parents, let me remind you, on 29th, eh? <laughs> they'll be here on this month. What if you spared some of that cash and brought it here? Yeah? So search your heart, search your heart's mind, and let's bring the wood to build the house of the Lord. Thank you. Standing there, please keep standing there, because I want us to. It's I want us to pray. Um, let's let's stand. Let's stand because I want I want I want us to pray, and I want us to pray two specific prayers. Uh, the first one I want us to pray is to pray. I know some of us have pledged. I know as Peter talks that way, some of us are looking at money, but to be honest, sometimes that money we feel needs to be allocated elsewhere. And I'm praying that God will guide and God will provide in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But I also want us to pray for our nation. Uh, as much as doing all this that we are doing, I, I, I am feeling that it is important for us to pray for our nation, even as we get the, uh, this, this uh, momentum of elections uh, and campaigns building up, uh, that God would lead us and that God would help us even as a nation to hear his word and to know his name and to be sober in our minds and in what we say and in what we do. Not only us, but also our leaders, even in the name of Jesus. So if you don't mind just holding hands again across the congregation, don't mind just holding hands and lifting up the name of the Lord, just go ahead and pray. Pray that the Lord will provide for you. Pray that the Lord will provide uh, even the resources that we need to do what it is that we need to do. Pray that the Lord will remember this nation at this time and in this moment. 
for the glory and honor of his name. Pray that the Lord will visit us even very powerfully in the name of Jesus. That we will know God's grace. That we will know God's breakthrough. Especially financially in the name of Jesus. Through our works. Through miracles. Through our businesses. Through people paying off our debts. And everything that it is that God is doing in our midst. Lift up the name of the Lord. And let us believe together that God is coming through for us even as a congregation, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that God is visiting us, that God is granting us grace, that God is giving us his goodness, that God is sending money to us in the name of Jesus. Pray even as you pray, that you'll pray for this nation, that you'll be united in purpose, that you'll be united in love, that you'll be united even in caring for one another, even in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. to the heights that you promised through your prophet that God this will be a springboard for uh, for revival revive us first as we revive the entire nation and this I pray believing and trusting in Jesus name amen and amen amen thank you so much please keep standing and get your bible musika esana and as we do, as we get to the scripture, allow me to call uh, um, Harun and Susan. We want to pray for you, even as you prepare for your wedding this coming Saturday. Um, so you dressed appropriately, it's our journey. And also the first announcement of the bands of marriage between Joanne Gathoni and Dambuki Motie, who are getting married on the 25th of June. Joanne uh, serves as one of our ushers. She's standing right at the back over there we continue praying for them. Shall we pray for these ones even as we, as we read the word of God? Heavenly Father, we want to ask you for your blessing upon Harun and upon Susan. We want to thank you for the wisdom that they have received even as they prepare for Saturday and for their wedding. We want to ask that, Lord God, you would lead them and that you would guide them. We know that you're already providing for them and we are asking that, Lord God, you would provide everything that they need, not only for the occasion, but for the purpose of marriage, for the glory and honor of your name. We pray that you'll continually bind them together with cords of love and that they'll be able to grow and love one another and lead their family, even as God will bless them, even in the name of Jesus. We thank you for an opportunity to hear your word and we ask that as we read it and as we hear it, that it will bring understanding to us, it will open our eyes and in obedience that we'll be faithful to live it out for the glory and honor of your name. For we pray trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 13. I'll read two verses from there. Philippians chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2. Okay? So I'm going to start from John. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. 
By the way, uh, on our giving towards Quest last week, we were at 746,000. As of uh, Tuesday, we were at 885,000. I think it's a good thing. See, I'm going to coffee kama a Yeah, like the, the team that uh, 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 Njao and Peter lead in helping us to do the construction have told me that I need at least 1.5 million to set up the basic classes and at least 3 million to finish. So, muniombe sana. Na mi ntawombea sana. Sawa. They give me pressure. You know, sit up here, pressure. John 13, verse 34. A new command I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Can you see the opposite of that? Right? So if you don't have love for one another, you are not my what? My disciples. Philippians chapter 2. Okay, it's in your Bible, believe me. Verse 1 to 5. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. This is so difficult. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Acts chapter 2, you know where I'm going with this, verse 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with our way. <laughs> All right, just looking at whether you're reading. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued meeting together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and did together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. This is the word of the Lord. You may have your seats in the presence of God. Awesome. Man, sometimes it's very exciting to preach. So, yeah. Uh, just one more. My auntie's here. Auntie Jane, si mama tutuku tukutambue na tukusalimie. This is... She has told me that she's now an official member of TCR. Pray for me. Haribu sana, auntie. My mother might be getting a daily report of what is going on, so please pray for me. I hope we are still reading through. Today is our 21st day of our 40 days of our community. I hope we are still reading through uh, the book better together. And we have been asking the question, what on earth are we as a community here for? And we are trying to unwrap this. The first thing that we said is that community is important. God did not create us as a community of faith to live in isolation from one another, but to live together. And we are learning how it is that we are able to live together and how it is that we are able to enrich one another. We talked about the compelling to love, that we are compelled to love, that if you are in Christ Jesus, you actually don't have options but to love. And I love the song that we've been making our anthem for this series, that we are able to pray for one another, to care for one another. While we were singing, uh, Pastor Marion mentioned to me when we got into that phrase, I will harm you with words from my mouth. Do you know how that is not to do? Hello? Do you know how difficult Kwanzaa in this adulting life where everything is where? You know, do you know how difficult it is not to harm one another? Right? 
But we are making that confession and growing into that, that God is compelling us to that. Last week, we talked about being commissioned to reach those who do not yet know uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ or who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. One of the uh, reasons I love the text in Acts 2, it says that the believers were together and the Lord added to them. Those who are being saved daily. Daily. I don't know where Pastor Noah went. There you are. Pastor Noah, I don't know how many people we have saved up to now this year. I don't know. So please put that together because I want to see it next Sunday up here. And I want to challenge us. I don't know what today is the day of. June the 5th is how many days of the year? Auto mathematics, 31 plus 28, that is 59 plus 31, uh, that is 90 plus 30, 120 plus 31, 151 plus 5. Huh? Apa, na yes, kwe mepika 187. Jameni, 187 will be past media, eh? 156. We should be having at least 156 people saved by now. Mumeniskia. Hello? Mumeniskia. If the Lord was adding to their number daily, we should be having one. We have, I think we have a backlog. So, Pastor Noah, next week is going to be 163, I believe. Okay? So, I want the number up so that we can charge each other up to reach others for the gospel of Jesus Christ and at least fulfill that scripture. Skikamandaskia. Are we together? Yes. And at least fulfill that scripture that we can go back to God and say, at least we are living in some way or the other what Acts 2 was doing. And so when that number is put up, I want you to be bothered and worried until the number is passed par. Those who are coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior, commission to reach. Today we want to talk about created for relationships. Created for relationships. Here is my simple point. I need, you need to create close Christian relationships in order to learn how to love. Now, there are relationships that are important. Husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, mother, father, mother, child, father, child, teacher, student, but the other way also, student, teacher. So that when the teacher tells you, I've never seen you in class, you can also tell them, I've also never, you know, <laughs> I've also never seen you in class. You know, that, that kind of thing. Landlord, tenant. And tenant, Leonita Retano. But you know what is important? Huh? Close Christian relationships. And I need you to understand that relationships communicate values. So wherever it is that you find yourself with your group, whether you want it or not, you are communicating values. You're communicating values. You are actually communicating values. The Bible says, bad company Corrupts what? It's about company, and it's either you are corrupting or you are actually building. So Christian relationships then become very important and very core to what it is that we are doing. And then you realize that as much as love is core, love needs to be practiced for it to be loved. By the way, you don't learn how to love unless you are exercising how to love. It's the same thing as patience. You, don't, you cannot say you are patient until God brings somebody in your life. Or as a neighbor. Because as I said, you can't choose family, you can't choose neighbors. Sometimes you can choose friends. Right? But most of the time you cannot choose your Christian community. If we all go out faithfully evangelizing, we are going to bring all manner of people right in here in the house of God. And you're going to learn how to be patient with them. 
Some of us, our patience is so low grade because it's about somebody sat where I sit. Right? Others, it's somebody who's doing something better than I am doing. And so I'm not being recognized to the level that I was being recognized previously or so on and so forth. But it is, <laughs> God brings people in our lives to teach us some of these things that allow us, because when you read 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is patient. But you don't learn patience until you have, somebody comes in your life that is really impatient. You don't learn kindness until you meet people who are very rough. Hello? If you're still kind to them, you don't learn long-suffering until you have people who are short-suffering. And fellowship, fellowship is the word that the Bible uses to describe being close to each other in relationship. Fellas in one ship. Fellowship. And I love that because when, when, you're on, when you're on a ship and out in the waters and when you're on a plane and up in the sky, you can't just abort mission. Right? Till you safely reach to the shore, which is heaven. So we are in this ship together and there is nobody aborting mission. We are fellows in one ship. Now, the true fellowship, if you have been reading along, the true fellowship, the kind that God wants us to live, is loving, is authentic, is honest, is open, is sharing, is unselfish, is serving. It is full of grace. Rick Warren says that you can worship in a crowd, but you cannot fellowship in a crowd. You cannot fellowship in a crowd. I, I love it when uh, uh, Kathy has said that we are going to nickname her, turn to your neighbor. <laughs> but I, I, I love when we say, hold the hand of your neighbor. And some of us who came with a neighbor are very quick to <laughs> hold the hand of the neighbor. But have you ever, have you ever realized that you make an assessment, a very quick assessment in your head, right, of whether you want to hold the hand of the person next to you when you don't know them. Hello? This is communal worship, right? But have you ever realized that? Okay? My brother-in-law is a pastor. Um, and he kept saying that part of sharing hymn books means that everyone must practice hygiene. Miele said, "Masi mimi." So, don't, don't, yeah. And so, when the pastor is saying, "Hold the hand of your neighbor," you kind of do a quick assessment. Ah, ama mimi ni zika mimi. That's why I surround myself with. Anyway, that's kidding. Right? You do that even when you are in a matatu, right? You sometimes pray nobody sits next to you unless you are assessing on the, right? I was on the SGR one time and I was praying, Lord Jesus, give me somebody, right? Because we are facing one another, just people that I can be able to travel with for the five hours of travel where you don't even have proper network, you know, and all this kind of stuff that I'll be able to at least sit in company of. And God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayers at noon time. God answers prayers also in there. Now, the faithfulness of God brought me to the front compartments. Somebody said, you are so-and-so. You have been told to go and sit, and there was no one there. <laughs> right? Let me tell you, you do struggle at that particular point. You know, and sometimes I'll tell you, look at your neighbor and tell them the grace. Because we are not looking, we're just like the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us now. Us, stop looking at me, look at your neighbor. That is why fellowship is important. Because it is in all groups. It is in those spaces that we actually start knowing one another and loving one another and caring for one another and actually being comfortable with one another. And 
even challenging. Whoa, that wasn't me. That was just a move. <laughs> and challenging one another to be in that space where we can even attend fellowship together. So that if we are attending fellowship together, then we can sit with one another. Now, Pastor Akisema, stretch your hand to your neighbor, then we don't have an issue. Am I Ah, good. The other option is to get married like Ken did. <laughs> fellowship is a place of sharing life. It's a place of doing life together, talking about our spiritual journeys and getting others encouraged. I was talking with somebody the other day, and they were telling me how we have lost the, 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 the essence of sharing our spiritual journeys together. Growing up, we knew whether you are born again on a daily basis. Because we'd meet and we'd share testimonies. You remember that? Maybe you saw your parents do that or something of the sort. People would actually meet and share testimonies. And then they also tell your testimony, hoping that they have not copied yours. And then you bless one another. Mungu wa kubariki na kutende mema. Bilia inasema katika zaburi. 121 and so on and so forth. You're able to share your spiritual journey. If you're not together, nobody knows where you are. Fellowship is not an event. It is a continuing practice. It's not an event. In fact, we get it wrong when we say, to naenda fellowship. To metoka fellowship. No, we are on the ship. So, to call in fellowship. We are in fellowship. <laughs> you can have people close together with the same goal, but unless some virtues, some Christian virtues are practiced and lived out, then it is as the same as being in an elevator. Because when you're in an elevator, you had the goal of being in that building. You had the goal of going up or going down, but you can't wait to get out. And others who are outside cannot wait to get in. It's like marriage. Anyways, just kidding. Okay, just don't, don't. Somebody compared it to an elevator. Those who are inside cannot, you know. <laughs> and those who are outside cannot. Anyway. John says in chapter 13, Love one another because it proves that then we are disciples of Jesus Christ. Love one another. That's the way. And by the way, the early church living it out that way, they did not even need to tell others to come to Jesus. The Bible says God performed so many things in their midst that even others, as I said last Sunday, they were asking, how can we be saved? We want to be part of this. Philippians 2 characterizes that fellowship, what it should be. Love, one purpose, lack of selfishness, looking to the interests of others. The, the, the key word in Acts chapter 2 is devotion. Devotion to one another and to the fellowship and to prayer and to the sharing of the word, because it is in this that we are hearing the word of God. It is in this that we are praying together. It is in this that we are identifying. This is a ship, and I'm part of the ship. I'm a fella in that ship, created for relationships. So, what distinguishes friendship? Because those are friends in a ship. From fellowship. It's because our devotion is to God first. And we find that commonality. And then we move together. Our devotion is to God first. Friendship might have other goals. In the faith, our devotion is to God first. And then we are able to move that way together. 
Fellowship means that you and I are committed to worshiping together, to doing ministry together, committed to the strength and the vitality of this congregation, committed to obeying God's word, committed to living out what God has called us to live out. And it is in those uh, small groups of fellowship and working together that we are able even to call each, out, uh, each other out but in love because we know one another and we care about one another and we can tell that we know one another and we can tell that we care about one another. On Friday, we went for a burial in Moranga. And uh, Joel called me yesterday and told me to thank you as a congregation for standing with them. But he also mentioned something. He told me one of the things that I'm seeing and starting to love about TCR is I can see that we are caring for one another. Do you know how many groups people try to throw me into in the course of a week as a pastor? And some of them, uh, by the way, I put my whatever so that I'm not, I don't wake up in the morning and find myself in five new groups, right? So I put some limitation to that. So when somebody sends me an invite, I normally will ask them, what is this about? And they explain. And I'll be quick, if I don't know them, or if I don't have fellowship with them, I'll be quick to send them some support and not be part of the group. Right? But when it belongs here, I'm quick to jump in and then we explain when we are in because we are fellas in one ship. We are fellas in one ship. Right? Because, I mean, in the course of life, where my age has reached, I know a lot of people. Right? Not a lot of people. Some guy sent me, I think we were in high school together, sent me something about a cousin of his. And I'm trying to think. We haven't talked in over 20 years. Right? Right? So just sent, and I'm thinking, I need to know how are you? Who are you? before I jump myself into that. And not, it's even not yours, it's your cousins. Because in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, we are brothers and sisters, right? By the way, if you are here and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we are cousins in the Lord. You need to come and become part of the family as brothers and sisters in the Lord, amen? We care for one another, we love one another. Okay, am I speaking the truth here? Right? Like, who, who is that? Let me just send you 500 and we are done so that I can concentrate on the fellas that I'm in the same ship with. Is this too true? I, is this? Is this? Nikweli? Thank you, Mary. So let me. <laughs> Let me point four ways for us to get into fellowship and into creating this relationship. Four ways. Fellowship requires time. It requires time. We all have the same time allocation. 24 hours a day, 168 hours a week. Multiply that by whichever month. Some of us, our time is more because we are free. Maybe because of the space of life that we are in, okay? Maybe you're a student, maybe you just finished college, you're waiting for work, so you feel hunger free, all this kind of stuff. Some of us are in a season where we are busy, work, and from work we have side hustles, hobbies, chamas, family, studies, and then now church, right? Uh, sometimes when you're driving with Pastor Getau, he will ask somebody to drive the car so that he can make calls while we are driving. And sometimes I tell him, Pastor, see you relax. Four hours, why don't we talk, you know? He tells me, no, I'm busy, I need to make this call, I need to make this call, and we are occupied in our time. You know what I came to understand? We must be intentional about setting aside time for fellowship. We must be intentional about setting aside time for fellowship must be intentional must be intentional the bible says in hebrews 10 25 do not give up the discipline of meeting together and then it points us out as some of you already are but do not give that up continue in it continue in it it takes 
it takes a commitment. It takes a setting apart and saying, this is what we are doing in that particular fellowship. Make time in your weekly schedule. Set apart time and say, by the way, this is a time that we get to fellowship in a small group. And we are able to meet and we're able to spend time together. I'm not going to have an optional plan. This is the day that we meet as a fellowship and I am prioritizing that that is my day and my time to actually do that. It requires time, but you must make time for it, whether you are busy or not. But they have come to realize the busiest people make time. The busiest people make time, right? And if fellowship is important to you, you will make time for it. You'll make time for it. It requires time. Community is built because we are committed. Because we are committed. Number two, fellowship requires authenticity. Authenticity. We can meet and talk. But you know, meeting and talking can be so casual and so platonic. Right? Until you make the intention of being deep. And by being deep, it means that you must be honest and trusting, and the other person must be honest and trusting. And I know, I know how it goes. You start by kupima pima mtu, right? Ah, sindio. Yeah, you start by measuring one another, right? You start by checking. If I tell them something, uh, I, was, I was told a story of uh, 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 three clergymen who are meeting on a Monday at a swimming pool, and uh, they decided to share what they were going through, and one of them said, I am really struggling in my family. I have a lot of issues with my spouse. And the second one said, I'm really struggling with money, and I am struggling even with the collections of the church. And the third one said, I really struggle with gossip. Right? That is why people measure one another. They look at whether you'll post their story. Right? And, and this is how we guard one another as fellows in a ship. If somebody is telling you something about a brother or a sister, it's upon you to stop them and tell them, why don't we call the person so that we are able to pray for them? That is a gossip stopper. Somebody should do a song about that. <laughs> Let me tell you, prayer is also a gossip Stopper. Is somebody sharing with you and tell them, let us pray for them. Father, I thank you for that sister. They are struggling with their husband. <laughs> their husband is not coming home. We are praying for Atakwambi Atena. You go like, where? Because the essence of Udaku, I'm a Udabuntuku, right? Is the other person is also flowing. Are we together? Atinini, where? Nabila Noranga Kimba Kanisa. That's the essence. But for us to create authentic relationships, then we must trust one another. And we must choose to be deep with one another. And we must choose to pray for one another. Hello. Yeah, and not post about it. Right? What's really going on in our lives? We are honest with one another. We are genuine with one another. We are intentional about revealing our struggles, our hearts, confessing our failures, acknowledging our weaknesses. Do you now understand why fellowship requires time? Because it cannot happen in a day. Even when you see a therapist, don't tell them everything on day one as much as you want to. That is why you do a number of sessions, so that you are revealing as you go and you're getting help as you go. Right? Yeah, that's what you do. The Bible says in James 5, 16, confess your sins therefore to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Three aspects there. Confess your sins, and it's not just your, your sins, what you have done against God, but it's your shortcomings and your struggles. And then it says to one another so that you are able to pray. Right? So it's not just sharing. and I, It's not just telling you. It's also about praying. And one of, the, one of the habits I picked up a few years back was when somebody shares with me something, I pray with them right there. Because by the time I get to the back, 
I might have met five people and promised to pray for them. And I'm not going to remember if I've not noted it down. So I'll pray for them right there on that particular spot. And then continue. Right? But then it says, in that prayer, then you're going to be healed. Some of our answers are right here. It's just that we have not yielded ourselves to the place of sharing and to the place of praying. And therefore, we get the healing that God desires to give us. It takes time. It requires confidentiality, but it takes time. Those of us who are e-group leaders, those of us who are in e-groups, create a safe and conducive environment where you are able to share with one another and where you are able to pray with one another. And where you choose, we are not taking advantage of each other. We are being a blessing to one another. Okay? By the way, one of the ways of praying for one another is not just praying, but also following up. Nili kuombea, what happened? Right? What happened after I prayed for you? Like, what is going on in your life right now? Number three, fellowship requires humility. The text in Philippians 2 talks about us humbling ourselves, even as Christ humbled himself. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, says, All of you clothe yourselves towards one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Pride will destroy community. That measuring one another, it will break community. Pride looks down on people. Pride makes me think that I am never wrong. Have you ever met those kind of people who are never wrong? No matter how much you talk to them, they are always right. It's annoying. shule. Humility, on the other hand, is different. You think more of others and less of you. More of others and less of you. There's a gentleman I met once, and uh, he was asking me for something. And I remember praying for him and uh, giving him some benevolence. When he was leaving my office, I called him back. I told him, why don't you have a job? And he told me, I have not, I've not, I've been looking, I've not gotten any call back from any interview and all this kind of stuff. And I, I asked him, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah. So I prayed for him and I, I wasn't, but I wasn't sure what I was praying. I just prayed for him as a pastor, I should pray for the people. And I prayed for him. And he came back to me a few months after. Actually, he, he did get a job. And then he came to me a few months after he had gotten the job. And he told me, Pastor, when you prayed for me, you prayed that God confuses me with many, job, with many jobs. And now I've received a job offer from MTN. <laughs> he was working for a startup in Nairobi. It was being called... Uh, to do something on the field for MTN in Eastern Central Africa. And he was asking me, what do you think I should do? <laughs> <laughs> I remember telling him, yes, well, in your pussy. <laughs> Tomorrow, I want to hear, because he was supposed to report uh, like the following week in Uganda. I told him, Tomorrow, I want to hear you're already on your way to Uganda to report. <laughs> He went, he reported to the job. One day he called me when he was in South Africa. And he told me, you know, I cannot imagine that the position in which I sit, right, from where I came from, and this is what God has raised me to. And he asked me, what do you think I should do? And I told him, my brother, remember, it is God who has raised you. And God has raised you so that you are also able to raise others. If God raises you and you choose to look down upon others, God will get the perfect opportunity to bring you down so that you can be at the same level with others and you can recognize that it is God who raises and it is God who sets down. They say in Ghana that if you see a tortoise on a tree, somebody put him there. 
and the same person who put him there can bring him down. So usiniliwa na Bwana uone kama ni wewe. Humility serves as the Lord raises you, serve even more. Same goes with giving. Because some of us, when we are earning 10,000, it's not difficult for us to tithe 1,000. We start earning 100,000. And you're thinking, I give to the church 10,000. Do they even know how to manage 10,000? <laughs> and God decides to bring COVID to take you back to 10,000 so that you can be faithful. Hello? We are fellows in one ship. Now, when you to need to be shaped in the ship, humility serves. Humility listens to others while being busy. Humility speaks about weaknesses so that we can strengthen one another. We are patient with one another. Humility is what helps me to forgive, knowing that I was forgiven, and therefore I forgive. You know, when you interact with people, you will realize that some of their mistakes are intentional. And some of them are in error. Like, just basic ignorance. And some of them are, you know, they just decided to do it. But humility teaches you to forgive and to teach and to learn. By the way, humility allows me to host others in my house. For some of us, God has blessed us with suitable houses. Some of us, God has blessed us with a bed and a sitting space. Bed, sitter. <laughs> and sometimes, not to say too quickly, sometimes people in a bed sitter are more proud than people who have a, a, a big home. Because they're thinking, nobody can come here. Who told you? Who told you? Invite us. We will come for fellowship. Bwana sifiwe. Mix for us the juice that is mixed like ile supu ya mta, ra. You know, ra. Serve us. We will eat and we'll take whatever it is. Because we did not come there to eat. We came to fellowship. Hello. And if God has blessed you and you have a lot and you are in your place and you are hosting and a bed sitter hosted you last time and now you are hosting us, prepare a good meal. Don't try to be humble by preparing us a small meal. And the, and the KU people said? There you go. No, 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 let me tell you. Sometimes that kamak of whatever is pride. Is pride. And God is trying to figure, now this one, if I raise them, where will they go? What end up? In whose hands are we? Number four, fellowship requires grace. Let me finish. Fellowship requires grace. So, sorry, let me back up Kidogo. So, if you are in an e-group and you are an e-group leader, force fellowship in each house. I'm giving you permission. Force fellowship in each house. Let them refuse once. Let them refuse a second time. The third time, you go by yourself. <laughs> know where they live. Then next time, pigiasi mumukiwa wapi, apochini. And tell them, we are now coming up. <laughs> I know my time is gone, but allow me to say this. One, one, of, our, one of our small group leaders is now shifted to Nakuru, Francis Mukaha. Francis Mukaha, while he was still in his bed sitter, was hosting an e-group. And it reached a point where he was hosting 75 people in his bed sitter. I don't even know how they were sitting. Right? We had to send Pastor Francis, the one in Moranga, to go and just so that they don't suffocate in that room. And then the church is called something different. To go and break that group so that they form other e-groups. But the guy did not care about his space. Wale mtakuta juice mtakunywa. Wale mtakuta maji ndiyo mtakunywa. Wale mtakuta turungi ndiyo mtakunywa. If you don't find, we will raise money and send for sugar. But we will host you. It's not complicated. I know people that we have hosted with Pastor Marion in our house and made rice, a lot of rice, and made githeri and add chicken cube so that it feels like it is, it has chicken in it. Harufu kutokambali. And they eat and they are merry. And then they take water. And after they take water, we bring out the juice. 
you, you, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys read things fall apart, right? And how Ihuama will make sure that Okonko has taken a lot of water and then she brings food now. And now he cannot eat because the water is already here. Uh, are we together? And wherever God has placed us, we've never been ashamed to host. Hello? We've never been ashamed to host. And sometimes we host and people come and look around. No, come. Come on, come on. So Rogers na kuja kujua kwako sawa. Nataka ni smoky takula tu. He told me to make sure that I don't mention him but I can't help it my friend. You are my friend so kuna issue. Fellowship requires grace. Hata ukicheza keyboard bado nitahubiri. Pole. They are warning me that church time is over but I'm having fun here. Colossians 3.13 says, you must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. You must extend grace to one another. You must extend grace to one another. Do you know when you're in close proximity with people, there are people who will rub you the wrong way? In fact, chances are more people will rub you the wrong way than people will will help you or will support you or will stand with you and all this kind of stuff. When iron sharpens iron, as the Bible says, there must be uh, uh, Sundays in Aitwaji. Sparks. There must be sparks. And yet that's the way we sharpen one another. Sometimes by offense. And therefore we must be learners of extending grace. We must extend grace as it has been extended to us. If you feel you are the one always extending grace, just relax. Your day is coming when you will require grace. And we'll extend it to you. Right? We'll extend it to you. Fellowship requires time. Fellowship requires time. Fellowship requires authenticity. Fellowship requires humility. Fellowship requires grace. We are created for relationships. Let us figure out our time in the week and say, I must be part of fellowship. As I said, find the reason to be part of fellowship, not the excuse not to be part of it. Find the reason. Time, authenticity. It is time that allows you to continue growing deeper with the people that you are working with, right? When we were hanging out with, uh, with the Katongora E group, uh, I realized that these guys have spent time and a lot of authenticity with one another that they even not only know each other's homes, they know each other's ushago because of time. Are we together? Because of time. They know each other's parents and all this kind of stuff because of time. It requires humility. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty arm and he will lift you up. It requires grace. Father, I want to ask that you teach us how to love one another authentically, realistically. And that God, you'd help us to not shy away from being known and from knowing others, but to seek to love one another and to seek to tend to one another and seek that time, that authenticity, that humility, that grace, so that we'll be able to love one another and follow after God for the glory and honor of your name. I want to ask that Lord God would find every reason to be of fellowship, every reason to love one another, every reason to care for one another, the glory and honor of your name. As we go out, I pray that you'll challenge our hearts and our minds to the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise.